Hey everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing in my series of where does our waste go and today we're going to be talking about paper. The inspiration largely for this series on my channel is because of all of the plastic waste that I noticed here on the shores of Okinawa. If you didn't know, this is a small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which is just one stop for garbage on its way to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And that really got me thinking like, why does so much plastic end up in our oceans in the first place? And since then I've explored other materials. I have explored glass, metal, and today we're exploring paper. For each material in this series, it is just designed to talk about the recycling process, where does it go? Where does it get shipped? Who actually recycles our waste in the US? And why so much of it does not actually get recycled and eventually ends up in the ocean. I'll leave those three videos linked down below as well as up here if you're interested in checking those out before this. Sorry for the jingly bell of Mochi. She's going crazy right now. Also, if you are new here and you find that I talk a little bit too fast for you, there are two things that you can do about it. I will leave the script linked down below in the description of this video as well as there's a little gear icon right down in this corner where you can change the speed of this video to something that best suits you. One last thing, as always, my sources will be linked down below in the description if you'd like to do some research for yourself. Like we learned in the video about plastic, the US used to send a majority of its waste to China. Among that waste, paper was included, but China banned imports of US waste in 2018. Because the market for recycling sort of crashed, there is really no value in recycling in the US. Though, as we learned with metal, recycling can be more valuable than making new products. But is it more valuable to recycle paper, or is it cheaper to just chop down more trees and make it from scratch? Unfortunately, it is not cheaper to recycle paper. Paper is one of those products where most of the time it is just cheaper to chop down trees and make virgin paper than it is to recycle paper. Throughout the last two years, cities across the US have been saving paper bales in the hopes that someone will take it, but no companies will. Instead, it's sent to the landfill or the incinerator. It is more important now than ever, now that we know the truth about recycling, that we need to just really cut back on our consumption of paper in this instance, but really on all single-use materials. So the paper recycling rate is better than glass and plastic, but unless it's metal for the most part, it's better off just being thrown away and made from scratch. And like I already mentioned, making virgin paper similar to the process of making virgin plastic is cheaper than it is to recycle paper. So why would companies pay more for recycled paper if they could just pay less for virgin paper? Because really all it comes down to, majority of companies really just focus on cost. How much is it gonna cost them and how much money will it make them? There are some good companies out there that are really invested in using more sustainable materials. So if you can support them, do so. Contamination becomes a big issue with paper as well. This wasn't a big deal when we sent our waste overseas. And that's kind of why the issue of contamination is still an issue when it comes to recycling in the US because the recycling system didn't care two years ago. If it was contaminated, oh well, we're still sending it to China, whether it's contaminated or not. And I think that's a big issue why today, two years later, so many people have an issue with washing out the recyclables before they put it in their bin. Back when we used to send it to China, it was just out of sight, out of mind. We don't have to deal with it. It's not our problem. So, oh well, who cares? But now that it has become our problem, we really see the impact that we are having on the recycling system by recycling incorrectly. Quite frankly, it costs too much to hire people to sort through contaminated and non-contaminated recyclables. So if a bag of recycling is contaminated, the whole bag is sent to landfill. Whether that's paper, plastic, metal, glass, whatever, all of it, all of it falls into that category. So the best thing that we can do as consumers, which I mention all the time, is to just recycle properly and do not put contaminated recycling into your bag. It has to be rinsed out or it will not be accepted. Well, it'll be accepted, it'll just be thrown away. Probably the most common piece of paper recycled that should not be recycled is greasy pizza boxes. The part on the bottom where your greasy pizza is sitting, it cannot be recycled because that grease is contamination. You can compost it, of course, and better yet, you can cut the top part off and you can recycle the top part, but don't recycle the bottom part. I feel like a lot of us, uh, I used to do it too, put stuff in the recycling bin out of guilt. I used to do that all the time with Tetra Pak because I was like, well, it's partly paper and I don't want to have the guilt of putting it in the landfill, so I'm just going to put it in with my paper. I don't do it anymore. I've learned my lesson. I definitely started consuming a lot less milk because I was guilty, but instead of putting it in the wrong bin and increasing the chance for that entire bag to not be recycled, I just put it in the trash where it's supposed to go. Same for you. I know there's some people out there who put, you know, greasy pizza boxes and Ziploc bags and other stuff that should not be recycled into the recycling bin in the hopes that it will be recycled and to kind of get a little bit of that weight off of them as the consumer, even though being a consumer, it is not your fault for the plastic pollution crisis, for any pollution crisis, for global warming, whatever. I'm not saying that the consumers aren't to blame a little bit, but 
most of it's on the, on the companies, the corporations. More on that in a later video. Another downside to paper, like plastic, is that it cannot be recycled indefinitely. Every time paper gets recycled, the fibers get shorter and shorter and shorter, meaning that the average piece of paper can only be recycled five to seven times before it can no longer be recycled on its own. Though the good news with paper as opposed to plastic is that new paper can get added to the recycled paper to make it last longer. That does not exist for plastic and plastic can only be recycled once or twice. So turns out any recycled paper that you might be buying probably contains some new paper in it as well. And not necessarily new paper, when it says new fibers, that can be anything from like wood scraps from construction sites and other things like that. Any sort of wood fibers get recycled into new paper as well. So when I was reading about that, it really got me intrigued. And I'm like, how does the recycling process for paper actually work? Why do the fibers get shorter? Why can one piece of paper not stay one piece of paper? So I'm working on an experiment. I'm working on filming it right now. The video should be live in a week or two. So stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. But I am working on recycling my own paper at home. I decided to do this because recycling paper at home is super easy. And two, this is really the only recycling process that I can mimic at home. I can't just recycle my own metal and plastic. Since I have the ability to recycle my own paper at home, I thought I would do that and share it with you guys and kind of give everyone a look into the world of recycling and explain paper recycling a bit more and actually be able to visualize why paper can only be recycled five to seven times. Because I think it's so hard to grasp concepts when it's just that, when it's just a concept. But when you can actually see it, when you can visualize it, touch, feel, whatever, it's so much easier to understand. So that's what I hope with that video and I hope you guys like it. Something else to note is what we are throwing out. It's fine to consume paper, but really only consume what you need. Most of what is recycled in American households is packaging and junk mail. A majority of what's being recycled in the US is stuff that we don't actually use. Like I'm not saying quit buying notebooks. If you're gonna actually use it, fine, that's great. But if you can prevent junk mail from going to your house, do it. So reduce packaging when possible and write to companies, email them, ask them to stop sending junk mail to your house. Enough about the downsides of paper. I started doing this with the glass video talking about some of the benefits, more in the middle. So <laughs> the way this series has gone so far is I've started with the worst two, plastic and glass. That's right, if you haven't seen the glass video, I highly encourage that you check it out because the glass is not sustainable as we think. I feel like a lot of times we think like the holy grail of materials in the zero waste world are paper and glass. Turns out metal might actually be the best. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, so definitely go check out those videos. But basically glass and paper are not as great as we think they are, though paper does have a lot of benefits, so let's jump into those now. By weight, paper accounts anywhere from half to three quarters of the amount of recycling in the US. In 2017, this number was 75%. I don't know if this is necessarily a perk of paper because that's a lot of paper, but a lot of it is being recycled. And I personally think that number is so high is because companies, schools, all that sorts of stuff really encourage paper recycling. When I was in school, we always had a paper recycling bin, but we didn't have recycling for anything else. And personally, that's why I think the paper recycling number is higher because it is a lot easier to recycle. It's more common to recycle and it's just more widely known, I feel like. The recycling rate for paper was about 66% in 2019. Though in 1990, this number was just 34%. We use about 70 million tons of paper and paperboard in the US every year, while about 43 million tons are recycled. So as you see there, most of the paper that we use in the US is actually recycled, which is pretty great. Though I think we can get that number down a little bit from 70 million tons. That's a lot of paper. Recovered paper can be used to make new paper products. About 37% of paper production in 2011 was recycled paper. In the US, only about one third of paper making materials come from recycled paper. The rest is whole trees, plants, and wood scraps. That's not necessarily good news about paper, but there's a, it's just a fact, I guess. Paper recycling is actually on the rise. In the last 30 years, paper recycling has doubled. The amount of paper being sent to landfill is on the downhill slope with about 33 million tons sent to landfill in 2008 and 21.5 million tons in 2019. Still a lot, but seeing this downhill trend is good news. Every ton of paper that can be recycled can spare 17 trees, 380 gallons of oil for processing and shipping, 4,000 kilowatts of energy, 7,000 gallons of water, and three cubic yards of space in a landfill. Over one third of new paper is produced with recycled fiber, be it from recycled paper or recycled wood pieces. This is similar to what we see with metal too. But what happens to our paper once it gets recycled? So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we used to export a lot of our raw material to be recycled. But now we actually recycle a lot of the stuff ourselves in the US, especially paper, Paper recycling in the US is definitely the most common to still do domestically, probably because it's the most 
cost efficient. But actually about 70% of recycled paper in the US is actually exported to be turned into new goods. So it's quite the opposite as it used to be just two years ago. So like I talked about in the video about plastic, China used to actually purchase raw materials from us, but China also used to purchase recycled materials from us like this recycled paperboard, but that also went down in 2018 as well. Though this happened, it is still great to see so much of the paper that is recycled in the US still be exported to be turned into new goods and still contribute to the recycling market, especially because the amount of plastic that was recycled in the US went down drastically in 2018 because China banned imports. Overall, I'd say paper is one of the best products that you can purchase on the scale, on a zero waste scale. Clearly, it's not the worst <laughs> plastic, but it's definitely not the best either in my opinion. My opinion, I still think metal is the best. One being that metal can be recycled indefinitely, as well as the market for metal is a lot more valuable, meaning that the chance of it being recycled is a lot higher. Though, of course, paper's recycling rates are pretty great, and I think it ranks up there. Some great things about paper is its high recycling rate and the fact that it can be repurposed into so much once it is recycled. It is also lightweight and doesn't break like glass. So if you have to choose a material, my personal opinion would be metal, paper, glass, plastic. Plastic is always gonna be last. So if you missed those videos to learn more about why I rate these materials that way, definitely go check those out. And as always, I'd like to end this video with what we can do as consumers to help the recycling process improve more. They're all basically the same from the other materials, so sorry if you've already heard this. You can just skip forward a minute or two. Recycle properly. I already touched on this a little bit at the beginning. Don't throw unwanted items into your recycling bin. Make sure you're not throwing things like receipts and magazine paper in there because those papers cannot be recycled. Here and it will be linked down below as well if you'd like to check it out. 100 things that you actually cannot put in your curbside recycling. Definitely check that out so you know how to properly recycle. Basically what it comes down to, get in contact with your facility, see what they will and will not take, and don't just throw things in your bin out of guilt. Second, I say this in a lot of videos as well, do not put contaminated waste into your recycle bin. This goes for, you know, contaminated paper as well as just trash in general. Don't throw any garbage into your recycling bin. Cause like I already said, if something is contaminated, it risks your entire bag being sent to landfill instead of having the chance to be recycled. This even includes wet paper, if your paper is wet, just let it dry first. It can still be recycled once it is dry, but in its wet state, it can't be recycled, which is very weird. Why can't wet paper be recycled? It needs to be wet in order to be recycled. The next tip is if it's raining or windy and you have an open bin, even if your bin has a lid, it risks the chance of being open in the wind. Just bring your bins inside in your garage, put a weight on top of them or something to keep all of your stuff inside and keep your paper from getting wet. Of course, something else that we can do as consumers is to just consume less. I'm not saying you gotta go completely zero waste, but think to yourself, do, do I actually need a new notebook or is there something I can use at home? Need more paper to take notes on or can I use scrap paper to take notes on instead? Just kind of ask yourself those questions and become a little bit more conscious of a consumer when it comes to paper, but also other single use items as well even some multi-use items. We live in a hyper-consumeristic society, so try to make break that mold a little bit and just think through your purchases a little more to see what you still need and what you do not need. Something else important that I did not mention in the other videos, and I kind of regret it because this is a really good tip, and that is to just support the recycling industry. So when it comes to paper, buy a recycled paper notebook instead of a virgin paper notebook because that tells that company that there are people out there who care about buying recycled products. If you miss those other videos, definitely do the same thing for plastic, metal, and glass. By purchasing from the recycling stream, it just proves to corporations, to companies, to our governments that we as consumers are supporting a circular economy instead of a linear economy, and that we wanna see more recycled products. And of course, the last thing that you can do is to educate yourself and inspire others. Definitely continue to watch more videos about this topic, read more articles about this, Talk to your coworkers, talk to your family, make sure everyone is recycling properly. If they're not, call them out on it. Of course, be nice about it. That is all I have for this video. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend some time with me and learn a bit more about recycling. I know it's not the most fun topic that I talk about here on my channel, but I really do believe that this is very important to learn about and educate others about. So I hope that you learned something. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button as well as share this video with others to get this message out to more people. Let me know what other materials you want me to investigate down below. I think I'm going to be talking about e-waste next in this series in a month or so. I'd also love to explore other materials that you guys are interested in learning about, so let me know. As always, until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Mochi, please stop. Though, as we learned with metal, it can be more valuable. <laughs> I did not mean to make that a pun. As with other materials too, contamination becomes a big iggy. Iggy? <laughs> this is recording right.
but now re blah, 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 plastic in 2018 when Chana Chana obviously um I'm out of words I ran out thank you so much for watching and until next time remember that the I always go too fast <laughs>